In this lesson, we're going to look at how to write synthesis and decomposition reactions. We're going to start by looking at synthesis. So a synthesis reaction is one that has just one product or one formula on the right-hand side of your chemical uh, reaction. So it might look something like A plus B, maybe two single elements combining to create a compound AB. The product, the thing on the right-hand side, it can have a coefficient in front if needed to balance. It can have subscripts, but there is only one formula on the right-hand side. There's no plus signs. That's how I know something's a synthesis. And the most common synthesis reaction that we'll look at, which we'll look at in this video, is when two elements combine to create a compound. So if you look at number one and number two, um, you have element plus element, um, single elements combining, and my product will be a compound containing barium and oxygen. Um, now, what you'll notice is some of these elements um, just have one symbol, and some of them have a subscript of two. When they have a subscript of two, we call them diatomic elements. There are certain elements that, when found in nature, we find them as molecules with two atoms bound together, and if this is the case, we need to represent it that way in the formula. There are seven diatomic elements that you should memorize. And I memorize them as Hofbrinkel. H-O-F-B-R-I-N-C-L. Hofbrinkel. Those seven elements, when they are found by themselves in a chemical reaction, need to have a subscript of two. You can memorize it as Hofbrinkel, or you can see that on the periodic table, they make a seven going from nitrogen to fluorine down to, ox uh, to iodine, and then also remembering hydrogen. So moral of the story, if you ever see one of these seven Hofbrinkel elements by themselves, you need to write them as a, with a subscript of two. Otherwise, if you see an element by itself, you can write it with just the formula. So let's look at number one, and I'm going to rewrite it bigger. Barium, Ba, is combining with oxygen. Since oxygen is one of my diatomic elements, that's right, why it's written as O2. If it's a synthesis reaction, they will be forming one product. And that product, if it's a metal and a nonmetal combining, is going to be an ionic compound. So we need to review how to write the formula of an ionic compound. So to write the formula of an ionic compound, I need to look up the charges of each of my ions and then essentially switch them and make them subscripts. If you need more help on doing this, I have a separate video on writing ionic compounds, um, and I suggest you do that. So if I look up barium, it has a 2 plus charge. So somewhere on the side, or even in my head, I should write this or take note of this. And if I look up oxygen, it has a 2 minus charge. And you might say, wait a minute, didn't you just tell me that oxygen's diatomic? Yes, oxygen is diatomic when it's found as an element by itself like on the left-hand side of this reaction. But when it's in a compound, oxygen can have any subscript based on, um, if it's ionic, what subscript or how many ions it needs to balance the charge of the positive ion. And if it's a molecular compound, just whatever subscript it would have um, based on the octet rule. So essentially, um, oxygen is diatomic when by itself, in a compound, you figure out the subscript. So going back to my formula, Ba is 2 plus, O is 2 minus, I switch them, and I get Ba, um, you might say Ba2O2, okay? But remember, for ionic compounds, we always have to simplify the formula. It's only an empirical or simplest formula that we write for an ionic compound. That's what needs to go into my chemical reaction. So my product is BaO. Remember, for your ionic compound, your metal or positive ion should always be in front, and my nonmetal in the back. So even if on the left-hand side it had said something like O2 plus Ba, my formula would still be BaO because I always want my metal in front and my nonmetal in the back. And now um, I'm going to take care of the fact that there's two O's on the left and one O on the right by balancing with coefficients. I'm not changing any formulas. I am just adding coefficients to take care of this discrepancy in the oxygens. So there's two oxygens on the left. To get two oxygens on the right, I'll put a two in front, and that changes my bariums. I'll put a two in front there. 
So if you have a metal reacting with a nonmetal, you will need to write an ionic compound and you'll have to figure out the formula by looking up charges. You might say, well, what about if I have a metal that has more than one charge? So let's look at something like number six. Chromium reacts with oxygen, and I tell you what formula it's forming. So I will tell you if it um, has more than one charge, which compound is actually being formed. So let's try that one. How would I write chromium if it's by itself? Oh, I would write it as CR because it's not one of my diatomic elements. It's not part of Hofbrinkel. Reacts with oxygen. How would I write oxygen when it's by itself? Oh, that would be O2 because it is one of my diatomic elements. And now I just have to figure out the one product it's making since it's a synthesis reaction. Metal reacting with nonmetal, I'll get something ionic. If I were to look up CR, it's a transition metal and it has more than one charge. It could actually be plus two or plus three. And that's why I am telling you what formula it's, uh, what compound it's forming. I'm telling you it's forming chromium three so that the charge um, is a three plus charge. That's a charge, not the subscript. So somewhere on the side, I should say, okay, CR is three plus, O is two minus. When I switch them, I get Cr2O3, and that's simplified. And now I'm going to write that into my formula or into my equation. All right. And I'll take care of any discrepancies in subscripts by balancing. There's two O's on the left. There's three on the right. They don't divide into each other. So let's try to get the least common multiple. Let's get six oxygens on each side. There's two already on the left. So if I put a three in front, I'll get six oxygens. And if I put a two in front of Cr2O3, I get six oxygens. That changes the amount of chromiums to four. So we'll balance that with a four in front. Similarly, if you have um, if you have two nonmetals reacting and you might not know what the product is, um, I can also tell you what the product is in name form. So if you look at something like number four, nitrogen and hydrogen react to form nitrogen trihydride, I'm telling you what the product is. So just quickly doing that, nitrogen by itself would be N2 because it's diatomic. Hydrogen by itself would be H2 because it's diatomic. Nitrogen trihydride, NH3 would be the formula of that. That tri is telling me that there's three hydrogens. If it's a molecular compound named with prefixes like that, there's no ions to look up. There's no charges to look up. There's nothing to switch. It's much more straightforward. And from there, I just balance. I would try to, uh, if I balance the nitrogens first, I'd get a two in front. Now there's six hydrogens, and I would need six hydrogens. Okay. Let's do one more example. Let's look at number 10. Nitrogen reacts with zinc. Nitrogen um, is one of my diatomic elements. It would be N2. Reacts with zinc, not one of my diatomic elements. We'll write Zn. This is a nonmetal reacting with a metal. So again, this is one of my ionic compounds. I've got to look up the charges. Even though I wrote my nonmetal first on the left, in my ionic compound, I have to have my metal written first or my positive ion written first. Zinc has a two plus charge. If I look up nitrogen, it has a three minus charge. I don't care about it being diatomic when I am making an ionic compound. And I switch, I get Zn3N2. That's what I'm writing into my chemical equation. And from there, I can balance. Once you know how to write synthesis reactions, decomposition reactions are really simple because they're actually just the reverse or the exact opposite of a synthesis reaction. Rather than having just one product, you have just one reactant or one formula on the left-hand side. So a very common example of a decomposition would be a compound breaking down or decomposing, as the reaction is called, into its constituent elements. Again, you might have a coefficient in front on the left-hand side, you might have subscripts, but there is just one formula, no plus signs, on the left-hand side. So what we'll be looking at is compounds decomposing into their constituent elements. And remember, when you are writing elements as they appear by themselves, you have to ask yourself, is it diatomic? There are seven diatomic elements. What are they? Hofbrinkel, H-O-F-B-R-I-N, and C-L. So if I look at number one here, 
I am starting with my ionic compound, and here it's written for me. It's already, the charges have already been looked up and switched, and I have my correct formula, and that is my one thing that's on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, I'll be breaking it down into its constituent elements. So if I look up copper, um, or if I think about copper, it's not one of my diatomic elements, so I'll just write it as Cu. Oxygen by itself is a diatomic element. I'll write it with a subscript of two, and now I just have to balance. There's two O's on the right, so I need two on the left, and that makes four coppers needed. Let's look at this third one, NH3. Okay, so again, I am breaking this down into its constituent elements. How do I find N when it's by itself? Oh, that's diatomic, that's N2. How do I find H by itself? Oh, that's H2. And then from there, it's just balancing. Instead of just writing the formula for you, I might give you the chemical formula. So something like uh, in words. So the name of it. So look at number five, manganese three sulfide. And if that's the case, if it's something ionic, okay, metal and non-metal, um, I'm going to have to look up the charges, switch, and make them subscripts. So I have to do that part first since it's on my left-hand side of the reaction. So if I look up manganese... Um, it has more than one charge, and that's why I indicated in Roman numerals what charge to use. And then has a 3 plus charge. And if I look up sulfur, sulfur has a 2 minus charge. When I switch, I get Mn2S3. And that is what I am writing as my reactant. So notice the compound with the charges having been switched, that ionic compound, is now on the left-hand side. So if I give you a name, you're going to have to do that process, that scratch work first. And then again from here, it's just breaking it down into its constituent elements. Manganese by itself, Mn. S by itself, typically written as um, just S. There um, are some teachers or some scenarios where you can find S as S8 or even S4, but that would have to be indicated in the problem. And from there, it's just balancing two MNs, three Ss. So it's really easy to write both synthesis and decomposition reactions now that you know about Hofbrinkle and now that you remember how to write formulas of ionic compounds. And again, if you need any help with that, check out my video on that.